One of the unfortunate things about Hell's Kitchen compared to other shows is that the final part of the episode can be rather dull, as it's usually pretty obvious by the time service ends as to which chef is going to be the boot that night. And 90% of the time, Chef Ramsay does make the obvious decision. And even if it is a decision that could go either way, the elimination is usually justifiable. But throughout the 20 seasons of Hell's Kitchen, there have been some eliminations that have baffled the fans watching, to the point where it's even ruined certain seasons, and makes you wonder what on earth Chef Ramsay was thinking. What's going on guys, I'm Flint Masters, and today, we're going to be counting down the top 10 most unfair eliminations in Hell's Kitchen history. Whether these chefs were screwed in order to create drama, or Ramsay must have been on something while making his decision, these chefs were all unfairly eliminated and deserve some recognition. Before we begin, if you want more unique Hell's Kitchen videos like this, then please hit that like and subscribe button, as I've got plenty of good ideas and would love to form a Hell's Kitchen community here on YouTube. With all that said, let's get this list started with number 10. We start off the top 10 with the most recent unfair elimination, which comes at the final 9 of season 19. Season 19 was such a breath of fresh air, as it was an all newbie season after two seasons featuring returning players and a whole bunch of unnecessary drama. But while this season was overall really good, it still had its issues. The only real controversial contestant this season was Mark, as he was a loudmouth and he wasn't afraid to voice his opinion. And at the final 9, after being inconsistent all season, it looked like his time had come to an end, as he was put up for elimination along with Adam, who was a frontrunner at that point. Point. Adam. Um, what? Ramsey's reasoning here was that he put Adam on garnish that night, hoping he would shine, but he ended up having a mediocre performance. And yeah, as you'll see throughout the list, a lot of these eliminations are obviously somewhat rigged, as a guy like Mark made for far better TV than Adam, which is what I think truly swayed Ramsey to make this decision. But like, come on, at least have a somewhat logical reasoning to send home Adam. Again, I don't think the dude had made one mistake up until that point, and I'm sorry, a bad communication moment or two on the freaking garnish station doesn't mean Adam is a bad leader. Ramsey really stretched here for Adam's elimination Nation, all for one more episode out of Mark. I hope it was worth it. At number 9 is Hassan's elimination at the final 11 of Hell's Kitchen season 15. I'll be honest with you guys, I've always found this elimination somewhat justified, but I do understand why the community harps on it. In season 15, Hassan absolutely dominated on the blue team. So much in fact, that he was switched to the red team after episode 4 since they had lost 3 straight services. He continued to do well on the red team up until episode 7 where he had his worst service and just like that he was gone. Yep, one service did him in after doing great the entire season. So what did him in? Well, I really think unfortunately, this just may be the worst timing in Hell's Kitchen history to have a bad service. Unbelievably, Hassan was nominated along with Chad, Jared, and Danny that night, which was the first time the three of them had seen the chopping block the entire season as well. While many people think Danny should have been the boot here, I can understand why Ramsey might have felt he had his hands tied. And since Hassan was supposed to be the leader of the red team, his bad performance made him stand out in this group of four. But the thing to me is, this could have easily just been a non-elimination episode, especially since we got that the very next episode. Again, I'm not as harsh on this elimination like most fans are, but man, Hassan really should have been given a second chance. Since Hassan is an elimination that I think is overhated, let's reverse it now and talk about possibly the most forgotten unfair elimination in Hell's Kitchen history. This elimination comes from season 13, hence the reason why it's probably so forgettable. And the person who took the fall was Ashley Sherman. Even though Ashley is as forgettable as they come, she was the main driving force for the woman on night one, absolutely owning the meat station, leading the red team to complete the first true great opening night dinner service. She was mostly consistent throughout the rest of the season as well, up until episode six. It was a terrible service all around for the red team and Ramsey put Ashley on fish to try to salvage the night. Unfortunately, she got the red team kicked out for overcooking the scallops. This got her put on the chopping block along with Bro, Aaron, and Steve who had all been far more inconsistent than Ashley up until that point. Yet, Ashley would be the one sent home. I guess I've always remembered this elimination so well as I never really understood it. Again, there's been plenty of eliminations throughout the years that were for the sole purpose of keeping drama around. But not only were chefs like Steve and Aaron worse than Ashley, but they weren't even good characters. So why was Ashley sent home over them? Now of course Chef Ramsay is literally the best chef in the world and he has his reasonings, but this is an elimination that I simply never understood, and really the first time I was ever blindsided by an elimination watching the show live. I didn't expect to get eliminated tonight because people have done way worse in this competition than I have. This is all I wanted to do. <laughs> but, I mean, Chef Ramsay obviously just thought that I wasn't good enough. 
It's a common thing in Hell's Kitchen for a chef to be nominated because long term, the team thinks this chef will be their weakest link and will put them up for elimination, even if they didn't do anything wrong. We've seen this happen to people like Don, Gabriel, Sabrina, and many more, but pretty much every time, Ramsay spares these chefs and even scolds the team for nominating them in the first place. In season 16, this looked to be the case with 22-year-old Aaron. Given his age and his mediocre start to the season, he was seen as a weak link by the blue team. So much so, that after they lost the episode 5 service, they put him up for elimination despite literally doing nothing wrong that night. No service mistakes, no lack of communication, nothing. And yet, he was sent home that night. Now, to be fair to Chef Ramsay, he was put in a bit of an awkward position as the other nominees of Johnny and Devin had been really good up until that point, and it would have been a case similar to Hassan to see one of them go due to bad timing of a poor performance along with unlucky circumstances. But still, do a fake elimination or something, Ramsay, because the blue team literally got kicked out that night, and yet Aaron would be the one to take the fall for it. I get he was never winning anyway, but knowing what we know now about the season 16 blue team, I would have loved to see how much Aaron could have possibly progressed this season. I still am like baffled on why I got eliminated. At number six is Curtis going home over Raj. Now, first things first, Curtis had an abysmal performance and under different circumstances, his elimination would be justified. But his elimination in episode two of season eight is simply unfair and heartbreaking. First off, the reward challenge of episode two was a sushi challenge and Curtis absolutely sucked. So take a wild guess at which station Chef Ramsay put him on that night. Curtis. Working on again, Chef. Yeah, fuck off. Look at this, fat fuck. Fat fuck, fat fuck, look at that there. Look at that, look, look at that. Come here, you. It's not good enough for me. It's not good enough for me. Yes, chef, working now, chef. Luckily for Curtis, he wasn't nominated that night. In fact, he wasn't any of the three nominees, as Ramsey called out Vinny, along with the nominations of Raj and Boris. But in the end, Curtis would still be the one sent home. Again, not only was it cruel of Ramsey to put Curtis on a station he knew he would struggle at, but eliminating him over Raj is simply a decision made to keep Raj around, who was obviously an all-time great character. No other way around it. Man, you gotta feel for Curtis. And his final message, good God is it heartbreaking. Words can't even describe how I feel right now. I mean, this experience meant so much to me, so much to my family. I'm sorry Daddy gave it his best, but I swear to God, I'll make it up to you. The very first true shocking and unfair elimination in Hell's Kitchen comes from the final three of season two. Going into the final three, it was a two horse race between Keith and Heather. Virginia had somehow managed to make it to the final three, despite Liddy being nominated at almost every opportunity she could be, and in general, struggled most of the season. But to her credit, she absolutely dominated the pass that night, while Keith wasn't exactly top tier. But still, Keith Liddy had dominated the blue team up until that point, and Virginia could have been the first boot for God's sakes. No way Ramsey actually eliminates Keith here, right? Keith. Wow, just wow. I won't call this rigging per se, but I do think Ramsey at this point knew Heather was gonna be his next head chef, and he used this as an opportunity to shock the audience, along with showing the viewers and future chefs that there are more things that go into his decisions than what meets the eye. I personally think that you have a hard on for Virginia. Yeah. Hell's Kitchen All-Stars, a season that is plagued by its infamous unfair eliminations. However, there are some eliminations that stand out more than the others, and Van's elimination is certainly one of them. Van was pretty much the same upbeat personality he was in season six, and you could argue he improved talent-wise in All-Stars, but then, pretty much out of nowhere, he was eliminated at the final 10. The reason for his elimination was lack of communication, which is out of character for Van. But like, there was only one bad communication moment shown that service, and other than serving up an overcooked salmon, his service that night was fine. So not only was the reasoning for being sent home fishy, but just look at the nominees who stayed over Van. Elise was her usual inconsistent self and was put up for the third time. Barbie and Robin were each put up for the fourth time. And even Millie arguably had a worse service than Van. And yeah, in case you can't tell by now, Van wasn't even one of the original nominations. So not only did Van really not do much wrong to be the boot here, but he was also sent home over four chefs who were all nominated and had been far worse than Van up until that point. Is drama really that important to you, Chef Ramsay? It's on. Oh. oh you opened a can of worms. It's on now, baby. Just know. Just know. It's on. Just the beginning. It's a competition. It's really on. It's really on. 
At number 3 comes from the final 7 of season 11. Season 11 is the longest season in Hell's Kitchen history, and due to the length, we saw the slow demise of Zack. He of course single-handedly finished the first dinner service of the season for the blue team after everyone else was kicked out, and he had an overall good run in Hell's Kitchen. But there's no denying how inconsistent he was, especially towards the latter half of the season. He was put up for elimination a total of 5 times, failed to be a good leader for the pathetic Season 11 blue team, and he was lucky to even make it to the Final 7 in the first place, as you could definitely argue that Michael going home over Zack deserves a spot on the list as well. But while we can argue all day long about Zack's other survived eliminations, there's absolutely no reason why he should have stayed over Anthony at the Final 7. Well actually, there's a very good reason why, but it's extremely unfair. Anthony dominated the entire season along with John, despite the Season 11 blue team at the time being hyped up as the worst team in Hell's Kitchen history. So Ramsey and production wanted to push this narrative as hard as possible, and unfortunately, it came at the expense of Anthony. Knowing Zack had struggled throughout the season and would likely continue to struggle, Chef Ramsey spared him over Anthony in hopes of Zack having another bad service at the final six, to which he did, finally sending him home and making John the only male to make it to the Black Jackets. I know, I hate to blatantly accuse Ramsey and the show of rigging, but Anthony was so dominant up until that point, and the narrative of this season simply wouldn't be as marketable had both John and Anthony made the Black Jackets instead of just one of them. By sending home the consistent Anthony over the inconsistent Zack, that put Ramsey and the producers in the best situation possible to produce a compelling TV narrative. Man, if they only knew that the true worst blue team of all time would come five seasons later. Forever I thought this unfair elimination would be number one. It's an elimination so blatantly unfair that it even turned the audience against Will and Paul. After having her ups and downs throughout the season, Elise was able to make it to the Black Jackets, and while you could definitely argue her staying over chefs like Jamie and Elizabeth was the right call, even the biggest Elise stands have to call BS on her surviving over Jennifer. After a service where I believe she had 17 service mistakes, Elise knew she was going on the block for the seventh time this season along with Jennifer. So, in an act of desperation, she got into the heads of Paul and Will to protect her over Jennifer in case Ramsey asked what their opinions were. And yeah, I'm willing to bet that Ramsey and the producers' faces all probably lit up with excitement when they realized they had a golden opportunity to spare Elise once again. Paul, who is the weakest chef? Uh -huh. Honestly, Will. Solely based on cooking, chef. Uh, Pure I cooking. I think Elise is a stronger cook than Jennifer. Is. Are you fucking serious? You are kidding me. I'm not it's saying the you truth, can't the cook. Parts. Who's the worst cook? Jennifer Chef. You are Thank fucking you. kidding me. I'm, just, I'm being honest. You know what? You better hope I fucking go home. The person leaving Hell's Kitchen. Jennifer. Good night. Keep your head up, Jennifer. Fuck you. Even if Jennifer was never winning anyway, it's an insult to the integrity of the show for her to go home over Elise at this stage. Oh well, at least she made it farther than Elise in All Stars. Oh yeah, speaking of All Stars. At number one is the most infamous unfair elimination in Hell's Kitchen history, and that is Nick not making it to the final two of All Stars. So for starters, the fact that he was even in this predicament to begin with is BS, as the first ever final three finale in Hell's Kitchen history just so happened to save Michelle from coming in third place once again. But okay, it's an All Star season, let's just see how this goes. Will we have a final three dinner service? Will it be a final three finale service? Well, the falling angel of this season would in fact be decided by a challenge, the usual five plate finale challenge. Okay, not exactly what we were hoping for, but it is what it is. Wait, why isn't Gordon Ramsay judging these plates? Oh no, please don't tell me. Is it Benjamin or is it Nick? Benjamin. Yeah. Benjamin. In a season featuring the best chefs in Hell's Kitchen history, the final two would be decided by Mark Frisora, not Chef Ramsay, heck, not even a chef, a freaking CEO. Just brutal and absolutely ridiculous that Nick went from a deserving winner of an all-star season to not even making it to the final two. Just knowing you lost and you disappointed your sous chef and your chef, no one wants to have that feeling. <sighs> Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like these Hell's Kitchen videos, then please be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and let's get this video into the algorithm for other Hell's Kitchen fans to see. Let me know in the comments what elimination you think is most unfair and other unfair eliminations that I didn't include in the video. With all that said, take care everyone and I'll see you next time.